So the Varga S is a brand new assault rifle which just released as a DLC weapon in Season 4 Reloaded and you can unlock it for free with a weapon challenge in Warzone and today I'll show you how to complete this challenge to unlock it easily and quickly. Now just as a side note this weapon can actually be unlocked secretly via Modern Warfare to make it a lot quicker than playing in Warzone so if you have Modern Warfare then head over towards the end of the video to find out how to unlock it incredibly fast in that game but if you only have Warzone that's fine stay tuned and we'll discuss how to unlock it fast if you've got the game for free. Also on a similar note if you want to unlock it in Vanguard Multiplayer of Zombies instead then check out a separate guide I made for that via the card on screen and link in the description. So I'm going to quickly explain the challenge, give the best class setup and game modes for this and then some quick tips to help you get the challenge done faster. So make sure you stick around until the end of the video so you don't miss out on any important tips. But if, like I say, if you do want to jump to a specific part like Modern Warfare or Warzone then feel free to do so via the chapters. There's also timestamps in the description. Now once you unlock this weapon you may want to level it up or unlock gold, diamond or atomic camo on the weapon or even make a good class setup with it. If so I'll have some camo guides for this weapon, a guide on how to level up guns fast and so on so feel free to check them out via the card on screen again and link in the description too. So let's get straight into it. How do you unlock this weapon in Warzone? Well the challenge says you need to get 15 close range kills. We'll talk about close range kills in just a second but just wanted to quickly say at the time of making this video the challenge is actually currently not available in the game. So you're able to unlock it in Vanguard and I believe Modern Warfare as well but for Warzone the challenge doesn't actually come up. I'm not sure whether if you keep getting the kills anyway it will count but right now the challenge isn't showing up so I'm not sure whether it's not tracking or whether it's just not showing what the challenge is. But the challenge is always the same between Vanguard and Warzone so we know that that's what the challenge is so I know a lot of people are going to be a bit confused and frustrated by that hopefully that will change soon hopefully they'll fix it and at which point you can just work towards the challenge which is getting those 15 close range kills any problems or if, if there's any solutions anyone's noted then feel free to leave them down below in the comment section I'm sure people will have problems and some people will have some workarounds but definitely the way I know that works for sure is doing it in Vanguard and probably Modern Warfare as well because that's how I unlocked it and just as a side note we found it quite suspicious suspicious that the challenge is very simple because normally it's something like get a certain number of kills this way in x number of matches normally like so it would be something like 15 close range kills in 15 different matches so this time it's literally just 15 close range kills which is kind of suspiciously easy so if that's what they intended great if they didn't and they end up rectifying it to make it more difficult like in x number of matches then obviously just adjust your playstyle accordingly but yeah for now i think it should just be 15 close range kills and once they actually put that challenge visible in the game it should be really easy for everyone to do. So just to clarify for anyone who doesn't know what is a close range kill? A close range kill is obviously just killing an enemy that is in close proximity to you. Now there's no specific numbers as to how close they have to be but in my experience at least from Vanguard point of view they could literally be about sort of anywhere between like 5, 10, 15 meters away and it would still count so it wasn't really that close if that makes sense it was fairly easy. It may be slightly different for Warzone I'm not sure but I'm assuming it will be basically the same so it should be about up to 10 or 15 meters should still count as close range kill but obviously you want to get as close as you can to the enemy to kind of maximize the chance of you actually completing the challenge so it's not always clear when you've actually earned these 15 close range kills because nothing really pops up and says you've done it unless you're working towards certain camos like some of the vanguard camos you have to get a certain number of kills at close range that will track and help you to know but other than that it's quite difficult to know so just as a side note if you get point blank kills this is where you're literally about one or two meters away from the enemy you'll get a medal for that it'll pop up on screen and you'll know you've got a point blank kill point blank medals do count towards this challenge but you don't have to get every kill as a point blank because that'd be way too difficult so you don't need to like kill enemies from like one to two meters away every single time but if any of them are point blanks that's fine at least you know those ones have counted the other ones you don't know for sure but once you've got 15 kills which you thought are very close maybe try and get a few more it should count obviously because at the moment this challenge doesn't stipulate about having to like do a certain number of matches you can obviously just leave the match whenever you can do it across multiple matches you don't have to stay or anything so as soon as you've done it leave the match all the weapons should work so like cold war model for and vanguard weapons but sometimes there's problems with tracking so if not try to use the Vanguard ones. You also want to try and check your kills counted by checking the challenge progress bar in the game. I'm not sure whether that will update or not. It has in the past, hasn't so much recently, but given that this is not a challenge about actually doing a certain number of matches, it might update in the game. If so, try and do that by in a match going to the weapons tab, clicking on edit loadouts, choose a loadout, click on the primary weapon, go to the assault rifle tab, scroll down the list until you see the Vargo S. It's likely at the bottom of the assault rifle weapon list, or at least at the bottom of the, like, the Vanguard ones. And by hovering over it, you'll see how much progress you made towards it. Check this before the match you know you're on and then afterwards see if it counted it might even track in the middle of the game i'm not sure it used to it might not anymore so you'll have to see but that might be a way of finding whether you've gotten those close range kills in the middle of a match now people often report that the challenge isn't tracking obviously the challenge isn't there to begin with right now but if you notice that once it's there and it's starting to work if you notice your progress isn't tracking you're either not close enough to the enemy or sometimes people will say that they've done it and they're sure they've done it and basically what you need to do is kind of like restart the whole game like close the application down restart it and then 
then it should show up. So if you notice that you thought, I definitely should have gotten those close range kills and you didn't, restart the game. If it shows up, it counted. If it didn't, it didn't count. So there's just some side notes. Just want to clarify that because a lot of people always struggle with that point. So we'll quickly talk about the class setup, maps and modes and some tips and so on. So first of all, the class setup, fairly simple. The challenge, like I said, is just about getting close range kills. So it doesn't stipulate any specific weapon you need to use. So something ideally like a SMG, a shotgun or an assault rifle will do, but literally any weapon you've got will do. So anything you're happy using at close range, it's great because you don't have to use any specific weapon. I'm not going to waste you guys time talking about specific attachments because it's probably not very relevant, but just you want attachments that will increase the aim down sight speed, aim walking movement speed, sprint to fire speed, the mobility, the fire rate, that kind of thing, because you're wanting to get killed at a close range. So don't bother with attachments for like optics that are like long sighted. Don't bother with attachments that increase like your recoil control significantly or like the damage range, bullet velocity, any of that. You don't need that because you're not killing them from a further distance. You're, you only want to get close to them. So use attachments that increase your chance of getting kills at the close range. So reload speed, higher ammo capacity as well. Those kind of attachments will all help. The other ones, not so much. So like I said, pretty much put on any weapon you want, like an MP40. I hear the kilo's good at the moment. Anything you want, just put it on. SMG is probably most useful, but any weapon you want really. Then for the perks, I'd recommend putting on EOD in perk one. So that allows you to take reduced damage from non-kill shit explosives and fire. Tempered in perk two to refill armor with two instead of three plates. So you kind of have more health per plate, which is useful. And tracker in perk three, which allows you to see an imprint of enemy footsteps. This is really useful because obviously you want to get up and close and personal with the enemies. And the way to do this is obviously to see where their footsteps are. So if you see red footprints along the floor running from left to right, you know they're headed right and you want to follow them. And obviously it's useful that way because if you're following their footsteps, you're behind them and therefore they're less likely to see you. So obviously try and make use of that. Try to stay as stealthy as you can. You don't have to hide or anything, but just stay as stealthy as you can and get the kill one. And that should be hopefully quite useful. Then for the equipment, you want to ignore the lethal, put on whatever you want, but just don't really use it. And then for tactical, you can put in stim shot to heal yourself or stun grenade, something like that. I'd recommend the stim shot though. For the field upgrade, I'd recommend putting on tactical insertion so you can choose where you want to respawn. Well, that can be useful, especially if you're not playing solos. Otherwise, you put on something like stopping power to increase the amount of damage that your bullets do. And that's quite useful, obviously, to kind of kill enemies faster and more easily in gunfights. For the mapper mode, plunder is best at the moment. It's great as there's lots of enemies in hotspots, custom loadouts, no gas clouds, infinite respawns and so on. But just as a quick note for plunder, make sure to turn squad fill off on the menu before searching for match so that means you won't have teammates on your squad it'll just be you and therefore when you die you keep respawning where you last were rather than being dragged across the other side of the map because your teammates are there and they're doing something totally different and not very helpful for you and i'll explain in a minute where you want to be going on the map now since you don't need a specific weapon or loadout rebirth can also be quite good so for example rebirth of the dead is a new limited time mode well there's also like rebirth or fortunes resurgence they're both really good because you've got sort of respawning going on you can pick up any weapon you want or when you get money buy a loadout whatever's good but because i said there's no specific weapon requirements you can choose whatever you want so you're not as limited and therefore you can play resurgence or rebirth if you want to now if when you're watching the video there are other great modes that are around for limited times like caldera clash payload that kind of thing obviously if they're useful make use of them i'm sure they will be so make use of them they're around otherwise plunder is probably best but obviously you can play rebirth or fortunes keep too so what are my tips what is the strategy you want to go for here well so first of all when you spawn in you want to head to a high traffic area now this is normally something like storage town or airfields i'd highly recommend storage town it's a new point of interest obviously Obviously loads of enemies drop there, I'm sure you're not surprised to hear that. So you want to use it to the best of your ability because lots of enemies pack in like it's a multiplayer map and you want to keep kind of heading towards the area to get the close range kills. Now I recommend sticking more to the outskirts of the area rather than the actual insides of storage town itself and the reason for this is because lots of enemies will land near the sort of grassy area around storage town so that they can run into storage town and therefore that's where you'll get most of your kills because they're all going to be landing in that area to go in and you, you want to do the same. So when you're parachuting in, try and scout out enemies on the floor below you that you can drop onto or very near so that you can get some close range kills they might not expect you coming so that's always really useful to do and just make sure you've picked up and put on armor reloaded your weapons before you enter a gunfight that kind of thing otherwise they'll, you'll die more easily and if you come across a downed enemy in plunder or any war zone mode for that matter especially plunder you want to get as close as you can to them and kill them and that should count normally if there's an enemy that's downed and you kill them by whatever method that will count as if you've killed them from scratch so if you've downed them you can then run up to them and kill them fully or if you come across someone that's already downed go up to them and kill them and that should count as well and obviously you want to get as close as possible to increase your chances of getting the challenge done finally another method which is more frowned upon is staying in the plane until it reaches the end of the fight path at which point all of the inactive players will be kicked out of the plane and dropped to the ground so there's obviously potentially a few easy kills here for close ranges but be careful as lots of players try to exploit this strategy so if there's 
any active players obviously kill them first. That is pretty much it for Warzone I think, but I promise you guys a really easy way to unlock it in Modern Warfare and I'm going to show you guys that now. So for Modern Warfare, if you've got it, you want to head into that game and choose something like Shipment or Shoot House. I think at the moment there should be a Shipment only playlist or there's the ability to choose Shipment which is good so go for that. Otherwise any other close quarters combat maps or anything useful that you like playing. Ideally core not hardcore as otherwise in hardcore you die too easily and therefore you're less likely to be able to get close to the enemy like you need to. And you want to be equipping a shotgun, SMG or assault rifle which you can easily use any weapon you want like I say. And you want to go around the map, run at an enemy and get as close to them as possible and shoot them. Obviously repeat that 14 more times and like I said before with Warzone in case you missed it the point blank kills also count towards this challenge as well but you don't need to go for 15 point blank medals just know that if you do get any point blank medals for being that close to an enemy like one or two meters away that will count as close range kills but you don't need to get them all as point blanks as that's a lot more difficult and then obviously if you struggle to complete the challenge in Warzone you can look out for other occasional limited time modes like the return of Caldera Clash or Warzone Rumble or anything like that you can use the free to play weekends that crop up from time to time we've just had one for Vanguard so you can use it as well to get the challenge done much faster and obviously like I say you can either go into Modern Warfare or Vanguard as well if you want so that is the fastest way to unlock the Vargo S in Warzone like I say at the moment it's not properly tracking the challenge but once that is set up I'm sure it'd be very easy for you guys any tips or any problems do let me know in the comment section I'd love to hear from you guys now that you've unlocked the Vargo S be sure to check out my guide on how to level up weapons fast if you want to level that up because I'd recommend doing that so you can get a good loadout this will probably be a fairly decent weapon now and in the near future so it's probably worth doing that and like I say also we've got camera guys if you need I've made another guide on how to get close range kills if that would be helpful for Vanguard and obviously like I said I made a guide on how to lock this weapon in Vanguard too so feel free to check that out if you need if you found it useful be sure to leave a like so that other people can find the video too and feel free to subscribe by clicking the bell icon to stay up to date with all my latest Vanguard and Warzone videos but I hope you found it useful and I'll see you guys all on the next one